And welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the games. Uh, this week we have special guest Eric. With dog. Oh, look at the dog. With dog. Oh my God. He's so precious. I wasn't planning on, wasn't planning on having dog, but um, need to have dog for a couple minutes. Oh my God. That is a precious dog. Really could you is. could you please introduce the dog to all of our wonderful viewers right now? Well, audience, this little guy is Diku. He's a Brittany. He's going to be trained up. He's going to be a killer. He's going to help me go hunt those birds. <laughs> he, he looks like a killer. He's a killer. <laughs> Which would help if birds were real. Yeah. yeah Fortunately, yeah. Uh, birds that. are actually government surveillance drones. I appreciate they, you fighting the power, though, Eric. Yeah. They well, kill- we have to make sure that after the coronavirus, a.k.a. battery charge, uh, we make sure we shoot them all back down. Exactly. <laughs> um, as we all know, the government killed all of the birds in 1960s and replaced them with uh, surveillance drones. You can yeah. go to birdsaren'treal.com to, to learn more about the cause. <laughs> um. We're not actually a conspiracy podcast. Please don't take that too seriously. I know my tone is generally pretty dry, but <laughs> don't. Uh... Also, can I take offense that I'm a special guest? I, that's why I said, you know, I, I didn't know if you'd. You son of a bitch. I didn't know if you'd acknowledge that or not, but yeah. It's Eric's been, been two months, man. <laughs> You've been on a couple times in the last two months, but um, hey, yeah. let's get into the games before we get too, too deep into the conversation. Not ranked. Um, East. Yeah, let's not rank. I'll, I'll get East it queued not... up and. Yeah. Oh, hello. Excuse me. Oh, hello. that's right. You're the party leader. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, let's. Yeah, uh, I appreciate so, Slugger noticing the the amazing jersey with with the old logo. We are working on getting those changed. Ah, yes, so, the so legacy don't, logo. Don't yes. It's not old. It's it's legacy. It's classic. <laughs> but yeah, Eric's back. Um. How was your, uh, I already asked you this in person, but we have to do it for the cast because show. How was your trip yeah. back? It was good. Um, went and saw all sorts of things, like literally all sorts of things. Um, we went through and uh, did Yellowstone, did the Grand Tetons, did the Badlands, uh, drove up to Glacier, did that. Well, tried to do that. That sucked. Went from the southern tip of Montana to the northern tip of Montana to go to the Glacier National Park. Beautiful area. Well, we get there to find out that after being on the road for like 10, 10 miles of it, it's closed. Oh, oh, nice. So, um, <laughs> drove seven hours for nothing. Well, I shouldn't say nothing. We saw one of the lakes and got to see how pretty that water is. But yeah, so that kind of sucked. But other than that, it was really, really good. Yeah. Um, in the Badlands, we saw a bighorn sheep, which is really fucking cool. I uh, was not anticipating that. So, yeah. Nice. Got to see some grizzlies. And, okay, I, I got to do a PSA here. Yeah. So, I like to think here at 72 Pin Connector, we, we've got a smarter than average audience, I'd like to think. You know, I mean, they like us, so they're clearly above the curve or ahead of the curve. <laughs> but, so, um, in Yellowstone, we were watching this mother bear and baby bear from a distance. It was cute. It was awesome. Well, then this mama bear gets in a ravine and starts walking a certain way. Motherfuckers get to the other side of the ravine where the bear is walking to stand and take pictures. No, it's a bear. It will literally tear your arms off. Motherfucking grizzly bear. They they head off a grizzly bear with cubs to take pictures. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, at that point, like, don't even call the rangers. Like, if you see him get attacked, just like, well, uh, yeah, we that's call that Darwinism. Uh, we thought that would happen. Yeah. Uh, welcome well, to evolution. There are signs <laughs> everywhere about wild animals are dangerous. I, I, yeah. I petition yeah, don't that we, people don't bears. read. That's you're asking people to read. That's way I too much. I petition that we remove all these signs Agreed. and just let Darwinism take effect, man. Agreed. Yeah. If you need to be told a fucking grizzly is dangerous, you're the reason we shouldn't exist as a race because that is bad (laughs) and then there was also a thing where there's a huge herd of bison and they were just kind of grazing and then slowly they were grazing towards us so we got out so we're like fuck it we'll get in the car we'll get a picture there people were staying there where the bison were migrating to oh my god i'm like what are you doing peeps 
Oh man. And and thank you, Salem, for for calling out that people can detect a Tom rant, uh, even if they're not watching the stream at all. Yeah. Yeah, we I actually I, have I to do, I, have, I, feel proud. I have to keep Tom at like half volume in Discord just to accommodate his his Wait, uh, half? yelling. Have I gone up? Well, I Am can't I take it down too. Enough? I can't take it down too much. Otherwise, your typing is louder than your voice. Oh, okay, all right. That that is true. That's how you know <laughs> it's a Tom rant is when his voice is actually louder than his keyboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the only way. That's the benchmark. Uh, what about you guys? How how, how y'all been? Been okay. Been good. Been uh, yeah. chilling. I had uh, yesterday off work. That was pretty nice. I'm gonna take Monday off work nice. too because why not? nice yeah i plan on taking five days off work and then i forgot yesterday was observed um mm-hmm. or, or memorial day labor day what the hell am i thinking independence day <laughs> so i only had to spend four days which is hey, nice. yeah gotta get also, the, the oh, most out of those days some fun stats my truck was running so i was driving my truck for 64 hours last week not consecutive hours. Hundred miles. That's a yeah. That was that's a lot, that dude. <laughs> that's rough. Yeah. That's a lot. Good thing I don't mind driving. Yeah, no, I fucking hate driving. I cannot imagine that. I I have to drive a lot for work, so I'm used to taking like you know hour long car trips or whatever. But I will never elect to drive if somebody else is willing to drive. I I would Agreed. much rather just ride in the car. I prefer to drive. As, as long as I know they're not like a ridiculous driver. Well, th- that's the thing for me. It's like I don't, I'm not comfortable. You, you want to be in control people. because you're confident in your driving, but you're not confident yes. in most people. Like, when I'm around, like Adam and I worked together for a long time, we had to drive a lot of places. So I got quite comfortable with Adam driving, mainly because it's nice to alternate who's driving two hours to work. Yeah. And I'm not a very aggressive or reckless driver. So. Yeah. I'm bad at driving. So for those uh yes. uh listening, sorry about the the puppy noises. Just know that he's precious and cute and we're okay with him him whining a little bit cuz he's needy. Puppy noises have been eliminated for now. <laughs> not no. oh, God. Wait oh, a minute. <laughs> Can we Oh, that, uh. not that kind of show. No. Oh no, 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 no. Fuck you guys. You know what I mean? Push to he, talk he's getting you. attention now, <laughs> but that sounded really bad because the dog just I'll stopped. And and Eric is just like, <laughs> Hurry oh, fucking you don't clip that. Eric literally kills a puppy on cast. No, no, come on, give <laughs> no, me a break. That would never happen. <laughs> puppy has been eliminated. Oh my god! Wow, comrade okay, Bunny says wow. I. Know- <laughs> Tom's wife says, I know it's a rant when Kitchen Tom is louder than Monitor Tom. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, which, by the way, speaking of Kitchen Tom, um, I uh, I got myself a delicious margarita here Ooh. with fresh lime juice. Squeezing your own limes these days? Damn right I am. I mean, nice. by me, I mean my butlers. Yes, they squeeze the limes for me. <laughs> He's got a guy for that. Do you mean your wife did? No, believe it or not, I actually did juice these limes myself. Do you have one of those? But yeah, uh, it's, it's delicious. You do it by hand, or do you have one of the juicer things? I've got one of the juicer things. I mean, it's it's by hand, right? Because it's, yeah. it's me doing the action. But yeah, it's it's got like a little, I don't know, like cone thing, and you sit it on there and mill mm-hmm. the thing around it. Yeah. You get the most Very juice out of it by, as possible. Yeah. Whereas if you typically just use your hand, you're going to have other shit that stays in there. Slugger, don't. I swear to God. What's you know how I feel about, about this. Slugger is referring to the the indomitable, suddenly pasta salad, where you're not expecting it at all, and then just fucking pasta salad. <laughs> just pasta salad. Suddenly salad. Suddenly pasta salad. We do still have the box. This is over there. I know exactly where this prop is. <laughs> you oh, kept it, the prop. Oh, Tom, you haven't made it yet? Do you have it within no. arm's reach so that you can exclaim I mean, suddenly not, salad not on the podcast? Reach. 
I'd have to get up okay. and grab it. That's not yeah. worth it. So if you see me disappear, you you know where it's where it's happening. I can't you know, imagine a to conversation that it would be important enough to actually get out of your chair just to make that joke. You, you never know. You <laughs> never know. It's the I mean, show. <laughs> if there's any show in the world which suddenly pasta salad is going to need to make a very sudden appearance, it would be this one. Yeah, yeah I guess. It, it would be. It would be you, too, specifically. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's one other thing that really pisses me off. We had a landscaping company take care of our shit while we were gone. Because, you know, you're gone for two months. You need something to happen. These dudes literally just mowed the front yard and backyard. That's it. They didn't do any of the side stuff. We get home. Our side yard is like knee high. What? <laughs> Do they just... So, uh, is it... Did you, did you pay like 80% off or, or what? Was this was this a, a cheap landscaping company? I don't company? know. I'm going to get a hold of this. I mean, it wasn't necessarily give you that half-off special? It wasn't even really cheap, so I'm not thrilled with this. So... I'm actually quite pissed like i know i saw that house when you guys were looking at it when i visited that time but i don't remember it's like is your side yard like at all ambiguous like maybe it could be your neighbors if somebody didn't no, know or no not at all so they're just the, there's, very there's inattentive no yeah and like the fucking weeds were coming through our gravel they didn't do anything about that or oh. they literally just did the front yard backyard that's it i asked them to take care of the ivy they didn't do that uh, i'm just Mm. I got home and I was that's, instantly pissed. That's even worse that you specifically asked them to do something and they didn't do that thing. Mm. Yeah. Not thrilled. Not thrilled at Did all. Did you call them? Oh, the, it's the, we You're holiday right now, so they're, yeah. they're going to hear. <laughs> you should get some of your money back at least. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. Or, this so, last anyway. month or, or they'll send them out to fix it or something. Too late at this point, but yeah, it's yeah. I mean, if you pay somebody for like several weeks worth of landscaping and they do it all the last day, and it's not really, not really why you paid them. True. Ah, uh, okay. Anyway, enough <laughs> about that. Sorry, I'm in a mood on that one. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting Eric all riled up. I'm getting all, all right. It's Tom we Randy have. Here. Yeah, we have not had a good uh, a good Urk rant in a while. Yeah, you know, no, I no, can't this isn't gonna hit this level. It's I can't not remember the level. last Urk rant. It was probably me talking about Last of Us, to be real. Mm. Nah, nah, I don't think it was quite that. Because I mean I understood your point. It was just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I completely understand you your know, point. I just think Urk, you're stupid. I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you ever need somebody to, show, to tell you exactly what he thinks, Eric is that person. <laughs> Which I appreciate. I like people like that. I appreciate that about you. Well, thank you. But no, nah, you know one thing that did suck about that entire trip? There wasn't any like chance for really unique food. Oh, that sucks. Because, I mean, you drove across the country and you didn't the numbers get a chance are to... Increased. The, well, the numbers are increasing, so we didn't want to risk going out to a lot of different places. We're already makes sense, kind of, yeah. you know, driving around a lot, so. Makes sense. We had a lot of fast food. Uh, However, yeah. I did try the impossible sausage on the uh, Chris Sandwich situation. Ooh, oh, how, how was, was it? Um, whoever tells you that it's just like it and you can't tell the difference, they're full of shit. <laughs> yeah, I've I mean, heard that the, about the that. Taste, the it, taste is dry. I mean, it's not the same at all. That said, but is it good? It's good. It's good. Like I enjoyed it. It's just if it's one thing to say, "Hey, this is pretty damn good replacement." Yeah, I'd agree, hundred percent. You tell me it tastes just like sausage. You're full of shit. Yeah, I haven't had the sausage. I really like the Impossible Burger that I had because it was like twice the size of the standard burger that this uh, this deli puts out. Mm -hmm. um, but it tasted fine. Like you, you can definitely tell there is a difference, but it's not drastic right it's not like a, a boca burger or a typical veggie burger like it it tastes like meat but there's something just kind of wrong with it mm -hmm. you see mine didn't taste like uh, i don't want to say it didn't taste like meat but it didn't taste like what it was supposed to but it was still good yeah i'm kind of wondering if that's like the difference between sausage and burger right because sausage i don't know to me sausage is a little uh, a little more nuanced than well, ground beef in a pile see to me that means 
that the sausage should be easier. Sausage I is think very it would heavily be easier. seasoned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Because as long as you get those seasonings right, it, it kind of covers up the the difference between the meat and the not meat. Yeah. The, the pork flavor and sausage, like, I mean, yeah, it's there, but it's not like punching the face. It's a lot of sage and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. Where beef, man, you want that beef flavor. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? Where's sausage usually beef? higher fat content, I think, and it's spiced. Yeah, yeah. This is, ow, fuck, bit my tongue. But the spice is what <laughs> I was talking about. I can't talk today. Why don't you guys take over? That the, hurt. The fact that people bite their tongues is a testament to the fact that no matter how much you do something, you're still going to mess it up sometimes. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? I don't talk much. Like, how often have has everybody talked and eaten? But everybody still, like, bites their tongue occasionally and stuff. Or bash your goddamn elbow on something. Yeah. Oh, dude, the, the funny bone, man. Oh. Such an awful name. Such a fucking terrible name. <laughs> funny about it. Uh, <laughs> well, it just, never heard that one. I don't know about you guys. When I hit it, like, my, it, my arm kind of goes numb when I do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know if that's standard. I know it hurts for everyone, but I didn't know yeah. if, like, it was standard to where it just, like, fucking numbs. Yeah. Beef. Yeah, Beef. but I, I want to try an Impossible Burger. Yeah, they're to. good. I'd like to try they're it. Yeah. I mean, just like, for- if, if I'm going to get, you know, a burger, if I go to a burger place and all things are equal, I'm not picking the Impossible Burger. But if, like, I go to a vegan cookout or something and they have the Impossible Burger, I'm not going to complain. I'm getting a burger. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, kinda, it's, it's like one of those things where I'm not going to pick it on its own just to do it. But if that's the only option, you know, impossible burger or no burger. Yeah. No complaints. Yeah, I get it. It's 100%. Fair. What's up, John? What's up, Jake? So yeah, uh, I'm. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, Jake popped in, made me think. Uh, Valorant's anti-cheat, man. That thing fucked me up today. Oh, really? <laughs> What happened? Yeah, I uh, was doing some Tarkov, and like I had some bad performance going on with that. I don't mm-hmm. know if was, I had updates queued as well, or not queued, but waiting to actually install. But man, it, it was fucking with my CPU. Hard. I have, you know, I have noticed it really tanks my frames on some games. I actually, I mean, because Valorant doesn't work on my PC anymore, I just uninstalled it, but. Every time I would, I would quit Vanguard, my frames in Half-Life Alex would jump by about 20%, which is pretty huge in a VR game. Also, you were lucky I wasn't on last week. You were saying some shit that I'm like, someone's got to call you on this. Oh, and no, no one was there to do it. Oh, but, the fact that he plays it in such a stupid way, which is why he yes. had problems with it. Yeah, I, and I, I already said I fully expect for you know, very few people to have this issue. But yeah, literally nobody do, has that issue. <laughs> if you do play in this way, so the entire Parsec uh, Discord server would, would like to have a word with you. Yeah, um, I know, but... Which is a non-trivial amount of people, right? It's not it's not a bunch of people. It's not 10,000 people, but there's a good 5,000 in there that are it, having issues. No, no, no. To them, that is trivial. Yeah. That <laughs> is a trivial that amount That is current of po- popularity. Yeah, yeah. And that just like I said, I don't expect this to, you know, to get fixed or, or anything else because it's just not worth it to anyone and nobody has this problem except for the very small amount of people who are playing this way. But for those who do, kind of sucks. I wanted to play Valorant. I can't. Yeah. That's fine. It does suck. Like, I'm I'm not going to, to petition them to get them to change their anti-cheat to serve me and the other small amount of people playing on streaming systems, but it does mean that I'm just not going to play. That said, I hope I think they will end up changing their system some because that thing. They, they really have like to. Jake's Vanguard calling it out. Scott's calling it out. That shit's heavy. Yeah, yeah. I I feel the exact way Dobby does. I will live through Jake from State Farm vicariously for Valorant. Yeah, totally, totally agree with that. I will, and I can't even fucking, or I can actually play. I still have. I still haven't touched the game. I installed it's, it. It's good. I, just, I don't know. It's a good game. It's it's free. Yeah. Pull it. Try it. Get rid of Vanguard right I mean, afterwards. It's it's installed and everything. I mean, I, I probably need to update it at this point. But yeah, but yeah. And I, I plan on jumping in soon as I so as soon as I this so, weekend's a little weird. Next week's weird. But then I plan on get back into my flow. I, I want to get find into a, Valorant. I did find a way to play Valorant, so I can play with you guys. I just prefer not to. 
Um, I have two mice on my desk. One with a big-ass USB cable running from the living room all the way to this desk. Oh, wow. And I buy guns with my Parsec mouse, and then I use the other mouse to do my actual aiming. It's fucking stupid, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> hey, whatever and, works. Um, for the, yes, that is water. I'm not fucking chugging vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? For the love of God. It sounds like you've given up. Or you haven't given up hard enough. I'm not sure which. I don't know. I think I haven't given up hard enough because like chugging vodka seems like that, dude, my life has hit the lowest of lows. Yeah. You don't chug vodka because you're happy. (laughs) (laughs) Irk 2020, you don't chug vodka because you're happy. That's words to live by, though. That's good advice. Uh, But yeah. Um, Any of you guys getting good food? Um, um, no, nothing no. new. I don't think this is gonna yeah. be like, that I can think of. It's gonna be a boring week. Straight to games, really. We, we talked a little bit about other things. I'm trying to think well, if I had anything. I had some more hot grass water today. Uh, yerba mate tea. It just tastes like grass to me, but it was caffeinated and it was early, and I needed something. So had some uh, into a yerba mate. Again. Yeah, that's fine. It was a. Uh, I knew that would happen. Like it, it's not a. I gave up and caved in. Like that was gonna be a temporary caffeine. You know, absence. Yeah, just to get beginning. yourself rebalanced, though. Yeah, I get it. But it doesn't take. It does not take long to just like get back where you used to be with that, though. It's crazy how how Dude. quick like caffeine tolerance can set back in and stuff. So um. On the way home, every half tank, so roughly like every three hours or so, was stopping, filling up, grabbing an energy drink. Mm. Like I was going through three, four energy drinks a day. Jesus, dude. That's like six. That's like 700 milligrams of caffeine minimum. I wanted to make sure that I was good. Yeah, I guess that's that's true. Like. If, if the difference is being over caffeinated and having too much energy to drink shit in your system or being sleepy while driving, yeah, just chug the goddamn <laughs> energy drink. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, that's... But, I mean, it worked. You can't make I, that I a regular good. everyday thing, though. No, no, no hell no, hell no. <laughs> or Scott's end game, even worse. I have a heart attack and it's both <laughs> energy drink issues and not being able to drive. Ah, uh, but yeah. What's up, suit so, up gaming? We're chilling on podcasting. Good this week. Um, so um, I I actually forgot to put a game on my on the show notes in the list. Um, and oh. Tom Tom bringing up Valorant reminded me last week. Uh, after the podcast, oh, yeah. we played some CS:GO, and I'm not really? a CS:GO boy, but um, I I reinstalled it and we played some gun game and and it was actually a lot of fun. I had a lot more fun than I thought I would. Uh, Adam is way better at Counter Strike than I am, so there you go. I think Do I with that well, information. <laughs> well, I I think Adam's probably better at shooters than you. Is what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah. yeah a lot of definitely. it. A lot of it came down to when I started playing Rainbow Six a lot. I think I started to be a little better at shooters in general, and then I like in the course of that, I lowered my mouse sensitivity like drastically <laughs> from what I used Ooh. to do, and that helps a lot too. More control. Yeah. But um, what, I can't remember if there's like a specific name for the mode that we were playing with the sniper rifles and like the low Scout gravity. Knives. Yes, that was a lot of fun. So it was all just scouts and knives? Scouts it was scouts and, and, and then if you jump, you like float really high. Yeah. Oh, Lord. It was really good. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. That's a good mode. I, we, we should get back into that and play that because that was a shit ton of fun. Actually, that would make for a great community game. It would. I think we did CSGO one time after, or maybe a couple times after the podcast. We've done it a couple uh, times. It's like a postcast. Some, sometimes more successful than others, but I'm always down. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not a huge CSGO fan. I mean, I, I think it's a fine game. It's just not my thing. Yeah. But yeah. I, I would I, never, I like, get... I, don't, I don't know that I like the, the regular mode as much as just, like, the goofy modes. I love See, gun games. 
Like gun I game. Gun game is my. Yeah. Gun game is how I think that game is played. <laughs> I know it's not. I know I'm the minority. I like gun game more than the. Big when somebody game. says CS:GO, the first thing I think of is gun game, or you whatever see, they call it in Go. So so let me for. It's the not gun game, know, right? Uh, it's it's called arms race because I think race, it's that's right. Gun game, but it's it's fucking gun game. That's what it is. So to put this in perspective, for those of you in the community who know Rocket League but do not know CS:GO, <laughs> saying. I play CSGO for gun game is like saying I play Rocket League for Rumble. Oh, yeah, I know. Exactly. Oh, no. I think that's even more acceptable than saying you play CSGO for gun game. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Why is it that Valve multiplayer is super toxic? Well, Dobby, I I will love to disagree with you because I have got an interesting game that I started playing oh, a few days God. ago. Oh, my God. Uh, Valve here we go. are not Okay, hold on. We talked about this. Got you ready. I'm going <sighs> to cut go. off my... <laughs> all right let's turn tom go ahead, down tom. go ahead and hit the mute there we go tell me about some moba you've been playing so anyway i decided to check <laughs> oh i'm sorry did something happen i think we lost huh. tom oh no okay. tom i guess well let's talk about uh we played some tarkov earlier about... that was fun yeah or or some dota i would have been meaning to get back into dota oh it's yeah really, really good moba the superior moba yeah that's but the yeah. one that you guys play that's that's Everyone the best knows one right it... Dota's absolutely where everyone goes for MOBA. I mean, League's okay, <laughs> but Dota's just where it's at. Okay, should we let him right, talk? Get, yeah, get him back in. That's, that's enough. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I decided I can't play Valorant, but I've got this Riot account sitting here. Mm -hmm. Let's play League of Legends. Oh, so what'd you think? As a Dota guy, I had fun. That's a I mean, step up, good. right? Because You're I'm pretty sure the game. last time you said you played Dota, you did not say you had fun. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, exactly, and that's that's exactly how I felt. I haven't had fun in the past year of playing Dota. I have not had a good time. Now mm -hmm. I don't play it very often, but every time I have played it, I've just been. It's it's just been fucking awful. It's been infuriating and depressing and. I don't know if like I'm I'm at the rank where I can't just play a game anymore, and there's certainly something to be said about starting league for, with a totally fresh account because mm -hmm. I'm playing with people who have never played MOBAs before, and I've got two thousand hours in Dota. Um, is there a lot of tra like? Is there a lot of transferable skill between the two games? Um, like yes. I know you have to obviously learn all of the, the heroes or champions, whatever they call them. Um, so actually that's one of the things that I really did appreciate, um, about league is that I didn't feel that I needed to know everyone as in depth as I did in Dota. So in Dota, all the heroes are, are pretty, pretty well diversified. Like the person who does one thing, like somebody, like there's stuns that everybody has, right? There, a lot of people have, um, but they all kind of look and proc in different ways and everyone has got kind of like their own island and they're all pretty unique in league. It almost feels like if you know how the general mechanics of the game work, the heroes don't change that up too, too much. Like the same attack that, you know, flies forward like an arrow, it's going to look the same no matter who is shooting that thing, whether it's a person with a crossbow or a gun or a big ass frost bow, like, cause they've all got their, their Dota two analogs for heroes. Right. I guess Dota 2 has got League of Legends analogs that came from Dota 1. It's a big mess. But anyway, the like the ground patterns and the way the abilities actually fire look relatively the same. So even if you don't know a hero, if you have an attack coming at you, you generally know what that looks like and how to avoid it. Um, now, again, this is less than 10 hours into the game. I've played a meager handful of matches, but it seems a whole lot easier to just get into and play. Where Dota, you need a couple hundred hours of sitting there just trying to figure out, okay, what the fuck just happened to me by who and why? Uh, League, you can just jump in and there's a little bit of that, especially if you're brand new to MOBAs, but it's way, way easier of an onboarding than Dota 2 ever was. But, I mean, this is also like I'm, I have a mentality of a grinder, so this might just be unique to that kind of mentality. But I find it super rewarding to have to put in a couple hundred hours 
and then you start figuring it out. Then it starts <laughs> clicking and then yeah. things start to fall into place. I mean, that is such a rewarding feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I totally get that. Um, and I, I'm sure that one of those cliffs exists, um, you know, for leak where you actually figure out how the game works. Right. But when you're just starting out and especially coming from, you know, 2000 hours of Dota two and coming at this from a perspective of let's try out a brand new game. It's really nice to not have to put in that 200 hours. Yeah. True. Right? It's, it's really nice to be able to just jump in league of legends and say, okay, I know how MOBAs work. Let's play a few rounds. And Hey, mm -hmm. it turns out, yeah, you're still trash because everybody is, but you're not absolute trash, right? It's not like your first hours of Dota 2. Um, it's like your, your 200th hour of Dota 2. It's how League feels straight out. Okay, so let's talk to another parallel that everyone knows about with Dota. How's the community? Awful. <laughs> okay, so that translates <laughs> one for one with Dota. Yeah, uh, yeah know. exactly. exactly. Um, I like the direct so, straight answer. Awful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got told to kill myself in my third game. Um, okay. that was great. So reported that guy. Um, I got a bunch of what the fuck team? What are you doing? OMG. Wait, what do you mean? It's your first day. Nah, this guy's a troll. He knows what a jungle is. He's a troll. <laughs> like, I'm like, nah, I, I mean, I, I'll try jungle, but it's my first day. And the guy's like, nah, you're trolling. How do you even jungle without smite? I'm like, what? What is that? <laughs> He's like, oh my god, you're such a fucking troll. I'm like, but what's what's smite? He's like, li listen to this guy. Listen, oh, it's my first stand. Like, no, no, guy, listen. It's literally my third it's game. <laughs> and then of course, no one offers to help you because no, you're the trolling asshole. No, god yeah. no. Everyone fucking left me to die. So that was that was great. Um, but I gotta say, like, it sings a whole lot less because matches in league tend to range from 15 to 30 minutes for the base game mode. Um, okay. Which I think is so, so much better than the, the 45 minutes, which is usual for Dota. Sometimes it, it hits an hour. Now, they have done a whole lot of things recently to try to shorten game length, but that 15 to, to 30 minute mark is perfect. It is fantastic because it is it is enough time that you do feel involved in the game, but it's not so much time that you get too involved and your teammates tell you to kill yourself because you're doing. Oh, wait, I mean, they do that anyway. Never mind. <laughs> but it's a whole lot faster to get out if you're having a rough time. You know, OK, I've got like 10 more minutes of this shit and then I'm done. So part of the upside of having that 30, 45 minute th game is the swing. Yeah. You can have a lot of swings in that time. Mm -hmm. We're in shorter matches, like with Turbo for Dota. Um, if someone gets carried away at the start, it's GG, man. Yeah. You're like, it is like moving hell and like, just you're not doing it. You're not coming yeah. back from it. How's league when it comes to when at the, like if you're winning at the 10 minute mark, you're going to win kind of stuff. Um, so it's, it's definitely not that case. I've had games where it clearly looked like at 10 minutes, we were good. There's not as much room for additional swings in league. I'll say that much. Like Dota, you can be swinging one direction to the next all day fucking long, you know, for, for a whole 55 minutes and somebody just pulls it out of their ass at minute 55. Um, well, one of the best, one of the best feelings about Dota is that it's, you're yeah. getting beat. And then at the 40 minute mark, you wipe their team and you just feel that momentum shift and then you yeah. just steamroll the rest of the game. Now those, those moments do happen in league too. Um, but there's a whole lot less room for them to happen. Right. Cause you've got, you know, an average of eh, 20 to 25 minutes. Right. Um, so you probably have like time for one, maybe two of those, two of those swings. If the game is getting, getting kind of crazy at the start. Um, but I, I, I would much rather have, you know, from a person who has experienced the highest highs and the lowest lows in Dota 2, I would much rather have that short match time and not have as many opportunities to pull something out of the toilet. Right? Man, I don't know, though. I, I get it. Being stuck in an hour-long game that you're just getting destroyed sucks. But, man, I am a guy that'll just walk through the shit if the highs are good <laughs> i know i i just like that's the whole reason i fucking hate playing dota 2 anymore it's because 
undoubtedly, right? Because in league, I have lost the past three games. But I'm thinking about playing it some more tonight because it honestly didn't hurt that bad. That that was like a little over an hour of, of gameplay losing. In Dota, if you get three losses in a row, it's two and a half hours, man. Yeah, like it's, a it's, lot. it's rough as shit to be able to I just mean, absolutely suck at a game and get stomped for two and a half hours as opposed to one. Yes, but I mean, sure, the victories don't feel as territory. sweet as Dota, right? Because it, it is a double edged sword. The victories are definitely not as as amazing, right? Like you're you're not going to tell stories around the campfire that one time you won the league game, but Dota, you could um it's it's just a trade-off yeah i mean at some point i do want to try it i feel i need to jump into it just to see Ooh. what's there at some point but i don't anticipate it ever dota's going to be my moba until the pokemon one comes out i mean there's if i want to play a, Do a moba i'm going to play dota yeah but i, I, I need I to try it. league at some point um so league as far as like systems interaction seems seems at least on the surface right a whole lot simpler than Dota 2. Dota 2 systems will play off of each other and interact with each other to do weird fucking stupid things. And if you've ever watched a professional match of Dota, like the way that the pros will layer their heroes and abilities on top of each other to make just stupid shit that somehow works is incredible. <laughs> um, in League, it seems like a lot of those things are pretty out in the open. Like a character will have this thing that like adds an aura of shadow around a person or tags them in some way. Um, and the rest of your abilities will say, hey, if you do this thing while this thing is active on the person, it'll have this additional bonus effect. Kind of cool. But in Dota, those things would be discovered. Those things would be player-driven discoveries of, holy shit, did you know if you do this thing with this thing, this happens? And they're more natural systems progressions. Whereas in League, it seems very much set up for a, uh, you're going to do your W, then your Q, then your E, and then if they're still not dead, hit them with your R. Um, and it's very laid out for you. It's prescriptive almost, um, which on one hand lowers some of that kind of, you know, game sense complexity. But on the other hand, it does mean that if you're playing a mode like ARAM, which is quite literally a single lane, 5v5, all random heroes smashing together, which is really fun. I love that. Um, it does mean that just by reading the descriptions, you can get a, a beginner's idea of how to operate a hero. Unlike Dota 2, where a lot of those random hero modes, you're sitting and floundering for a while because you don't know exactly how it was intended to play that hero. Yeah. I, I, but, again, I mean, because Dota 2, you know, it embraces that complexity, League kind of gets rid of a little bit of that. Well, because this is one of the cool things, though. Like, um, I think it was Dobby. It was Dobby or uh, one of our other friends, Heroic Saint. They were playing Oracle. I like Oracle. <laughs> People who play Dota with me know that I run a decent amount of Oracle. She, uh, there's a move that Oracle has that disarms the opponents so they can't attack. But it also makes it to where they can't take magic damage. Oracle also has a nuke that'll do like 200 damage, but it'll then heal 60, da or 60 health per second for three seconds. And they weren't aware of that. You can use that as a healing move on your teammates as long as you disarm them with your disarm ability first. Mm -hmm. It blew their mind. They were always using them individually and didn't realize that they could get flow together. Yeah. It's just, it's what you're saying though. It's the systems interacting in a way that you wouldn't expect yeah. that allows you to do some really cool shit. And in Dota 2, that's how that discovery happens is by either watching YouTube videos or talking to friends or watching other people play. In League, it's spelled out in the abilities. It's it's right there on the tin. Now, that said, there are there are ways that, you know, Things combine in League to make things fun and interesting, but that's not the normal mode. The normal mode is here's this ability, here's how to use it, try not to hurt yourself, yeah. which is fine. It's, it's definitely a more easy, casual, friendly onboarding, uh, which is why I think League actually has a decent amount of new players not bouncing off of it because it is fairly easy to just get going, right? Yeah. Even if you don't have 2,000 uh, hours in Dota 2. Which again, League? 2,000 hours in Dota 2 are rookie numbers. Those are like your silver two, gold three sort of people. I've had this argument with people, and I still hold by this. Dota has a new player issue. They don't get new players. New yeah. players go to League. It's what happens. Mm -hmm. 
And I can but. see why. I, I can absolutely see why. Not to say that Dota 2 is like the worst game in the world, even though it is. Um, Dota 2 has got an issue with all of this, co the complexity up front, right? With League, it kind of, like, even in the tutorials, it trickles it in. Yeah. Also, I'm sorry, yeah. guys, if so the fireworks are coming through. My Some neighbors around here are having, having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. But no. Um, so all in all, Tom, tomorrow you're playing a MOBA. What is it? Um, you know, tomorrow I'd say League. Uh, I'm I'm having a way better time with it. In the, I would rather trade off those highest highs and lowest lows. Like I would I would rather trade off kind of the the. What am I trying to say? Like, I, I would rather have the experience and the highs and lows be less potent than Dota 2 to not be subjected to them as long, right? A, a good win in Dota 2 can satisfy you for a week. In League, it doesn't have to. Um, so Dobby is asking, have you ever tried Hero of the Storms? Yes, I have, and I fucking hated it. So whereas, like, all the things I'm saying that I like about League, the, the less complexity, more simple onboarding, and Heroes of the Storm, it seems like they took that to a horrifying extreme where there was no complexity, even if you were looking for it. Like, because in League, you can do weird, crazy, complex things. The game does have the ability to do that and surprise you. Heroes of the Storm seemed like, unless you were at the very pro level of play, um... You you couldn't. There was just there was nothing. It was baby's first MOBA, and it was insulting to anyone who had played anything that came before it. If it was your first MOBA, cool. I'm sure you loved it. But for anyone who's coming from from League or especially Dota Two, it was it was like the sweetest fucking Southern sweet tea going to uh, or the the harshest blackest espresso going to a Southern sweet tea. It was just complete whiplash. Some some people would really appreciate that that change. Yeah, yeah. And if if you absolutely loathe the the complexity of Dota two, and you think even League is a little bit much for you, Heroes of the Storm could be a fantastic option. Now it doesn't look like Blizzard is putting much anything into it anymore. Didn't they kill it? They kind of killed the esports scene, but not really. They they kill it in a way where they can bring it back with amnesia in the second season, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, of course that was the plan." But it's still ironic to me that they are the ones who initially brought in MOBAs. I mean, kind of in a way because it was Warcraft. Yeah, and now that they're the ones that are definitely on the outside looking in. Yeah, for sure. This Pokemon MO or MOBA is going to be more popular than Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, easily. Out the gate. Easily. I'm yeah. like, on one hand, I'm kind of looking forward to that. On the other hand, I'm kind of dreading it because it could go sideways in a whole lot of ways. I'm only looking forward to it because if it's bad, I just won't play it. I guess that's true. So I'm I'm eager to see how they pull it off. I think it could be really, really, really fun, especially because there's there could be some fun synergies that you can never actually do in the games. Yeah. But neither here nor there. So Tom played League. Um, yeah. Quick, before we get off of that, what do you think of the esports stuff? I know you were oh, looking shit. around at that a little today. Yeah, I completely forgot to, to talk about that. And that's honestly the most impressive thing about League. So if you thought uh, Dota 2 uh, or other esports had it good uh, and you've never checked out what Riot is doing with League, totally... Totally different ball game. We're talking Little League versus the fucking MLB uh, of differences here. It is insane. Um, so I was take I was checking out some League of Legends esport uh, vods. They have this thing called Pro View, which is currently free due to COVID, um, but it is paid. And that's another thing I kind of want to bring up about League is that the microtransactions they lean into it hard. Everything about the game is free um that you really really need but if you want to start getting into it uh it's going to be paid like every little feature is going to be paid do you want the pro view for for esports vaults well uh, you're gonna have to pay for it do you want these heroes you're gonna have to pay for them um, and you can grind for that currency for a lot of things but a, a decent amount still require real world cash so you can't grind for everything 
uh, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, but uh, this pro view is insane. They give you like three different YouTube windows, like three or four, depending on how you set them up. And you can arrange them in whatever way you want with live stats on the sides and the bottoms matched up to the video perfectly. Um, and um, like you can choose everything from a live map view to here's the casters view, casters audio, you can toggle it on or off. Um, you can do individual player perspectives. So if you wanted to watch like uh, your tank, or your carry and your support, like rec bottom lane, you can put those two side by side, then have the casters down a little window and watch the map over here, and then watch the kill feed over on this panel. Absolutely that's, insane. Absolutely that's really, insane. That's a lot that's of options. Really that's really cool. Just in a browser. It's not even in the in-game client. It's literally just in the browser. Um, and they've got the drop system worked out perfectly where you go to their website to watch for drops. Um, and you don't have to go to a specific platform. So if Riot wanted to, because the game I was watching was on YouTube Live, they could choose whoever the fuck they want as their live partner since it's run through all of their shit. They have all the integrations. Could they run this on Mixer? Yeah, they could. If they really wanted to, they could run this shit on Mixer and have all the drops and everything else work just the same. Yeah, that I saw what they were doing. It's really cool. Um, it's like I would love Riot to see riot built all the infrastructure for an incredible platform and then said oh shit we got to put a game around this like it all like league of legends is a good game the infrastructure is incredible like so, so absolutely insane this is something i think that I'll, I'll call it out since we're currently playing it um rocket league i think could make a whole lot from yeah it would be so nice to be able to watch the matches from whoever's perspective you want and I know they yeah. do a pretty good job of changing the perspective for the most part um, in, in the Rocket League tournaments, you know, changing the perspective to somebody who is, you know, has possession of the ball or will, you know, they're pretty good about that. But it would be nice to just have the option to just watch whoever you want and see how they play. Yeah. Well, and as well as I, I'm just thinking this way, like, okay, uh, Psionics running RLCS. They have their official discord. They have channel A, channel B. Team one goes in channel A. Team B, two goes in channel B, and they have observers in both of those channels. You can toggle on and off the comms of the team while you're watching it. You can pull up the individual people and have their perspective the entire time. Like, how the com awesome of an the comms, would that be? The comms would be amazing, but I can understand a lot of teams not wanting to participate in that. Like, I don't know, maybe the 72 PC team who has... Yeah, you know, I... I'm talking from a fan perspective, not yeah, an org. for sure. Because as an org, yes, I get it. But if you're talking just RL as an esport, that helps. Mm -hmm. Because that would be fucking rad. But neither here nor there. So, games other than League, because fuck League, I can't talk about League. Um, yeah, I, can't I finally got into some Tarkov. Yeah, we had some good games so, today. Yeah, I think we had four raids. Uh, three of them, I got out with shit starting off. So, I mean, and the first one, and so, Tom, this is kind of countering a point that you made last week about the um, late and the wipe not being able to really play as well. My yeah. very first raid fucking got 10 kills. Jesus. All right. There were scav kills, so though. That's worth it. Yeah, but I mean, that's still Hold what down. you can do, though. But you got 10 scav kills that. without getting, you know, hunted by a PMC with top tier gear. Like, it's yeah. totally fine to, to play at this stage. Really, all stages, yeah. except for like when they do the special events at the end of an update where they switch a bunch of stuff around. But then again, at that point, they kind of give you gear almost at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As well as all your scavs at that point are raiders anyway. So you're, if nothing else, your scav run will be fucking fun. Yeah. Yeah, we had some. Good, yeah. we had got some good raids in. We got Eric's uh, a lot of his questing stuff done. So the early stuff. Yeah, got done with the annoying custom stuff. Yeah. So now I'm on the annoying wood stuff. <laughs> it happens. So I actually did a raid after you got off. I did one more raid because I was trying to do that one where you have to stay in a completely dehydrated state. For five minutes oh yeah um and i ended up dying before that five minutes was up and in, in irks one but uh the the i looked up the guide on how to do that quest the easiest 
So you have to chug a jar of mayo, which is disgusting. And Eric took a screenshot of that. Because um, it's disgusting. Yeah. Wait, and then, and then <laughs> chugging a jar of mayo gets your uh, hydration all the way to zero. Oh, shit. Does, is that dehydrating me? Yeah. You should stop I mean, chugging yes. mayo for sure. Okay. I would. Shit. Yeah. All that's right. disgusting, Tom. Please. <laughs> Um, but, no, but no, I got dehydrated and, uh, and then you take like a stim that'll keep you from dying from it. Right. It'll heal you gradually over time for, you know, about as five minutes. Um, so that was perfect. I was, all I had to do was survive five minutes, died in Urx raid. That sucked. So I was like, ah, oh, whatever. So I, I went into another one right away because my dehydration was still down from the last raid. And I basically... I didn't really feel like playing that much. I just wanted to get that quest out of the way. So I like laid down in a bush and was basically AFK watching the, the Rocket League salt mine stuff <laughs> until the five minutes was up. Um, and I actually accidentally waited too long because I didn't see the little notification that says, hey, you know, you got that task done. So I waited too long and, and my dude die. was like almost dead. So I had to like heal myself up or whatever. And I was by the dorms and customs and I had another task that was there and that's a pain because that's a really hot spot on the map there's always players there there's always action going on um but i thought whatever i got the other quest done i don't really have anything to lose i didn't have any cool gear on me or anything so i went into the the dorms and i actually got the item i needed and i got out to the the extract outside the car was still there which is a uh, what an extract that isn't always available um because whoever takes it you know leaves with it and it's gone and nobody else can use that extract but you have to wait a whole minute after you activate the car before you can actually get out. So I started the thing. I hid in the bush again for almost a minute. And I'm getting there to extract. I had five seconds left. And this dude starts opening fire on me. And I'm like panicking. I'm running around the car. I'm like, dude, come on. It's like literally the last, literally the last second and a half. He's like shooting at me. And I'm just trying not to die before I can get out. And I, and I, <laughs> Fine. I actually got out. He didn't kill me, but it was like the closest I've ever been to dying before extracting. It was ridiculous. That would be stressful as hell. Uh, yeah, I would have been so frustrated. But no, it ended up turning into a two quest, you know, kill two birds with one stone kind of raid. So that was cool. Nice. But yeah, it's uh, I felt really good playing. Um, I missed it and kind of got that itch going for me. Yes. And I also and I also missed Rocket League. So. Y'all know we play Rocket League on the cast. Well, it's not really playing Rocket League. Like we're playing, we're, but we're on autopilot. So, like, yeah. we're not in comms, calling stuff out. We're not try harding or anything. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Tom. You're not. Um, Adam and I are not. No, I'm <laughs> but, um, so I actually got to play some of that today. Man, that felt good. Yeah. Well, kind of felt good. My thumbstick still fucked up, but it felt good. You and me both. We've both been playing a lot of Rocket League today. Yeah, but um, I'm trying to catch up. There's that five-year anniversary event. I'm just now starting getting stuff for because I hate not getting event items. It's weird. I don't mind not getting crate items, but I hate not getting event <laughs> items. Like, I have well, to get all of them all the time. Yeah, well, it feels like you can get the crate items later, right? Event items are much more time limited. Yes, Ooh. and you can't trade for them. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't get it, you're never getting it. It's just done. Where crate items, you always have the option of, oh, I can buy it off someone. So, oh, yeah. What's up, phone? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, hi, phone. We're good. It's, it's seven o'clock. It's all good. But no, so I played some Rocket League. Felt good. I missed Rocket League. But yeah. That's, and then I think the only thing I played this entire time was Slay the Spire. I played so much Slay the Spire. It's a great a bedtime game. Yeah. Ooh. Cool that you're still into it. So, seems like it's gotten a lot of enjoyment out of you, or yeah, you've got a lot of enjoyment I've out been, of it, rather. But I've been playing a lot of it. So yeah, that's that's, good. that's been it. That that's all. I finished uh, the main storyline of Control. I finally, finally oh finally. finished that up. Yeah, nice. So so it is an, like an open world, open building game, I guess. Uh, so so you can you know you you get the main story done and you still have you can still do like the side quests and all kinds of stuff which i did a couple after i beat it and i have to say some of those side quests like you have your normal like 
sort of boring ones. But there are actually some really cool side quests in that game that I feel like players would be missing out on if they didn't do those. Oh, really? So I did a couple of those. Um, I absolutely love that game. And I there was a sequence towards the end that was like one of the coolest sequences I've ever played in a game. Um, I don't really want to say exactly what it is because if anybody wants to experience it, it's way better to just experience it, you know. But I just I absolutely loved Control. I thought it's an excellent game. One of the best games I've played in a while. I'm, I'm Eventually, boring. I'll get back to it. I don't want to get to it until I have a 2080 or something that ray traces. Yeah. Yeah. It's The spectacle is incredible. And not just the graphics, but like the actual, just the world itself is, there's a lot of like really cool set pieces and you could, you could take a screenshot and make a wallpaper out of so many areas in that game. They're really unique. It's delightfully weird, right? It's got that. Yeah. I don't even know how you would describe it. It's just got a lot of charm and the world building, I think, is where it really shines. There's so much to to see and read and you never really understand everything. Even like even after beating the main story, you never really understand everything. It's all kind of I don't know. Kind of nebulous. But, yeah, but you don't need to. Like it's not a game where I'm mad because, you know, I got through it and I still don't know what's going on all the way. But the whole game is about you know, unexplainable, you know, supernatural phenomena. Yeah, exactly. If they gave away all the answers. It wouldn't really fit. Yeah. It wouldn't be unexplained if they explained it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I very, very highly recommend Control if you're into any kind of like third person action uh, sci fi thing. It's got so much character. It's cool. Yeah, and some of the stuff you were talking about on that was just like, man, I really, really want to try that out at some point because it was some really cool shit you were talking about, like mm -hmm. the grabbing the floor randomly and how chunky it felt. Yeah, yeah, all the, the abilities in the combat are really satisfying. Which is good because like Tom was talking about with the uh, sprinkler guns in, um, God dang it, Black Mesa. It just like feels oh. like a water faucet. It's like that, yeah. you don't want to play that. Yeah. So actually, the that sequence I was talking about earlier, like the really really cool sequence towards the end, the yeah. the first person I thought about is Tom in that sequence, because Tom really? would absolutely love it because of like the music that's playing during it, and just the the whole thing. It's really cool. I almost just want to stream that to you so that you can see it. Just author and Heights, right? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, just screaming <laughs> everywhere. Also, I want to call out the credits. Like, the song that played during the credits was a band called Porcupine Tree, which is, like, a progressive rock band. Like, I don't want to say super underground because within that, like, sphere of types of music, everybody knows who that is. But, like, you're never going to hear them on the radio. Like, ask anybody on the street. Most people aren't going to know who they are. It's, like, it's, you know, one of the genres of music that's not you know, super mainstream or anything. Mm -hmm. So I was really surprised when that song started playing. I'm like, I've heard this song before. What is this song? And then I was like, oh my God, they took this like obscure, like progressive rock band and that's the, the end. But it fits. It fits with the, the whole game. It was cool. Did they redo it or no. is it actually just that song? No, it's straight up the song just plays. Oh, nice. But yeah, so Control's gone. Uh, what's next for you? Um... You know, I actually thought about buying the DLC, but I was reading some reviews and it's like probably fine, but it seems like it's just basically more of the same stuff. Mm. And part of me would be fine with that, but I don't know. I might just do something else and then I can always go back and play some of the segments of the game again in Control if I want to play more. Yeah. Or do the side, Is there any more other side game stuff. That is there any game that's kind of catching your fancy of like, this will be the next thing I go through? Um, well, I Scott's bought calling out journey journey. I don't know. I, cool. Oh yeah. Like the PS3 that's journey? actually, that's actually one of the games I, I need to play soon because I did buy a journey. It's on steam now. Um, there's, that's one of two games actually I need to start playing soon is journey and, um, outer wilds. I bought that as well. 
you gotta let me know when you start playing Outer Wilds. Yeah. I, I am excited to to get you guys into that game. I want to play that. Is that one on? It's on Steam. on Steam. It now, just right? yeah, I, I bought it as basically as soon as it released on Steam, and I think Did it's they, on sale um, from the summer sale. I was gonna ask if they gave it a summer it, sale price or yeah, not. Yeah, it's not expensive. Well, it's a relatively cheap game anyway for a new release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, those I think those will those two will be my next two. You know, non-standard Raga League, Escape from Tarkov, etc. Game. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm happy with that. But yeah, um, <laughs> I really, really want that game. That whole concept of the time loop. That sounds super cool. And I've I've not actually watched any gameplay or anything, so I'm excited to go. Even though I, obviously, Tom talked about it a little bit on on a couple of casts, but I, I feel like I'm still going in pretty blind, which I'm excited for. Yeah, you effectively know the mechanic, uh, and that's yeah, it. Yeah. Ooh. Which is, I mean, it's fine. Yeah. Like, I was explaining the whole thing about, like, to Gina, that I feel a lot like you because I've been influenced by you when it comes to if I know I want to play something, I avoid everything about it. <laughs> yeah. Especially games like Last of Us. Like The Last but of yeah. Us 2, please avoid everything before you play that. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, please avoid everything before you play it. I'm hoping to have it done by next cast, if not next, oh, the one after it. Okay, okay. When I play a game, I I kind of go hard at like it. Like the the couple pints and Ben and Jerry's to you now, or after you beat it. <laughs> I, I feel mean, like Irk doesn't get affected as much as we do from games like that, dude. I not that he doesn't like games like that, but I don't I've think. I've subscribed to the Lifetime Network. I have Ben and Jerry's in my freezer. Like, just box of tissues. Like, I've been crying the whole time since spoiling <laughs> it myself. It's, it's a thing. I don't think Eric will ever oh, cry God, from good. a video game. Ever. <laughs> I don't know. If Have you ever cried like watching anything, Eric? Bass Pro Fishing. I'm just curious. Like a movie or anything? I've cried in The Lion King when Mufasa died. Well, yeah. How young were you? Oh, no, actually, I cried from... Uh, <laughs> When little foot's mom an, died. As an adult, <laughs> have you ever cried watching or playing a media? Or even yes, like no. almost or like teared up or felt that like kind of whelp in your throat? All the time. I've, I mean, I've felt the whelp every once in a while, but I don't you think know, I've Dobby, actually ever teared. Dobby, when we did the spoiler cast for The Last of Us, it was just like, nah, they can all fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> he Okay, playing I, this war of mine and watching him brutally murder uh, an old couple... <laughs> just for funsies like no, he no. was lying they she told me point blank no for meds funsies. i found meds in that <laughs> bitch's drawer <laughs> I, I love she to deserved to die time. she Loved deserved to, to die he says and then her husband tried to see what happened and i pushed him down the there's stairs not a I sentimental said. bone in his body uh he watched he watched that scene with the dog in uh in omega man or what was it called um it was it wasn't Omega Man when it hit theaters. Oh, I oh you're talking uh, I am Legend. Yeah, I am Legend. He saw the fucking dog scene. Didn't shed a tear. The man is a statue. <laughs> I didn't shed a tear. That, that I mean that that that's one was a, a hard scene, one. Though. That's a hard that, one. That's yeah. a sad scene. I'm not immune to emotions, you fuckers. I just <laughs> typically, you know, has I was to be gonna well I was gonna defend going. you on that point. <laughs> I'm void of joy. I'm not void of emotions. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god That's fantastic you're not void of joy eric can we can we clip just that <laughs> not... could that be the podcast we put out this week is just that clip <laughs> that's a good quote I'm, I'm with dobby animal scenes like and and it seems to like even go into like animated movies like fuck if a dog in like a fucking pixar movie dies i'm out man like I'm out. That doesn't. Uh, if it it only pets, it has to be pets. Like animals in general. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, you know my background. Eric's fellas. hobby is you killing animals in general. <laughs> like like okay, I can watch like David Attenborough like fucking talk about how a gazelle got its like face torn off by a lion. Like whatever, cool. Um, but like somebody's goldfish fucking dies. Nah, man, I'm out. Mm -hmm. I'm out. I'm that wondering if they. Love, damn it loved 
I'm wondering if they put it in the garbage disposal or the toilet. <laughs> like that's my logic whenever I see that. Who puts it in a garbage disposal? That's fucking evil. I mean, if you fl- nah, I won't go into it. Yes. Oh my god. I'm evil. All right, Dobby, you know the that. scene from Up. Are you talking about the first 10 minutes? Because, yeah, I was a sobbing, quivering mess in the theaters after 10 minutes of watching a no, no, children's no. movie. Yeah. Y'all want to talk about shit that's... um. Sorry, I was reading something. Shit that was rough to watch. Futurama, the dog. Anyone who's seen it knows what I'm talking about. Yep. It's when he finds his dog in volcanic ash in the future. They realize they can clone it. And then he realizes his dog probably moved on after he left anyway. So he destroys the fossil so he doesn't clone it. Then they show that that dog waited outside of his work for the rest of its life waiting for him to come back. Oh my God. That was one of the roughest fucking things I've ever seen. And that's been a fucking cartoon comedy. <laughs> Futurama got fucking real with shit. Like that was damn. <laughs> I never saw that one, but I, I've, Jurassic heard, I've heard about it. I've never seen that episode. episode. I don't think you I ever saw to, that episode. It's a great show, though. I need to Jurassic watch it. Jurassic Park just for the hell of it. I don't know. I'm still coming down from the uh, absolute like play, depression of The Last of Us 2. So. Play The Last of Us 2, watch Finding Dory, watch the first 10 minutes of Up, and then watch seven Jurassic pounds, Park. Watch Seven Pounds. And then yeah. Finding Dory wasn't that bad to me. Finding Dory that, is that supposed to be like brutal? It was it was condensed depression. Like if they had like an injection of medical depression that they could just give somebody, it would be Finding Dory. It's just literally a liquefied DVD copy of Finding Dory. I mean, okay, maybe I am void of emotion. I'm like what the <laughs> fuck? That wasn't that bad Dude. to me. Dude, okay, so Renee and I were looking for something, like, because we had had a fucking rough week, right? We were looking for something kind of lighthearted to watch, like, over a weekend. We had some dinner. We had cake. We're like, all right, well, hey, it's Pixar. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be, like, a little emotional, but it's not going to completely destroy our night. Nah, man, we watched Finding Dory. We just went to bed. Like, that's it. We're just like, nah, all right. It's worth worth mentioning, like, your state of mind going into it or, like, you said you were having a rough week. Like that makes a huge difference in how I think certain yeah things affect yeah, your mental state going into something. Absolutely, yeah, dude. If you need to pick me up, watch Moana all day, yeah. every day. That movie is fucking excellent. And yeah, it's a happy movie. Yeah, it is. But yeah. But speaking of games so, that'll devastate you to the moon, I have that, and I want to play that. I bought that because that the story of that seemed like it would be really cool. Yeah, man. That was one of the ones that affected me the most, I think. I did, I mean, and it's like it wasn't pixel, much of a like, game, so I guess it ages well. Yeah, but the fact that they made what is basically what was it made in like RPG Maker or something? Yeah. yeah. The fact that they made something like that into something as meaningful as that was pretty cool. It's still one of my top ten favorite video game stories depressing as fuck and uplifting but, and yeah it's I mean, got uh, it's it's like the it's got the whole bittersweet going with it yeah it's depressing but like also the most like sentimentally positive things happen in that game mm. that make it just absolutely beautiful near near autonoma that was that 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 story was good for that kind of thing hmm. where it just really kind of tugged at you a bit but yeah. Anyway, that was a yeah. sad, depressing yeah. shit storm of a fucking area. So let's move on, shall we? Yeah, let's move this on. Something. Tom, um, talk about some other shit. All right. Uh, so, of course, I've been going through Half Life some more. I I talked about this a little bit on stream. I should not be getting scared by this game anymore. This is my third time through. And I'm still, like, jumping at every single goddamn jump scare and every little, like, zombie where he's around the corner and I know he's there. He's there, for fuck's sake. I'm going to shine my flashlight over here. He's going to be there and he's going to try to grab me, all right? Don't you... Oh, God! Fucking hell. Every time. Every time. That game freaks me the fuck out. And it really shouldn't be. I've played through it. This is the third time now. And... (laughs) Every single fucking time I'm jumping and, sh- and shrieking 
on camera, on stream. I'm sure everybody else loves it, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know how the game does it. Have you guys ever replayed like scary games and you know that the jump scares are coming and it every single fucking time it just gets you? Uh, I haven't yeah. replayed that many. Like most of the horror games Five I've Nights replayed are more are more revolved around atmospheric horror than like yeah. actual jump scares and stuff. Five Nights at Freddy's, you know it's coming every fucking time and it still startles the shit out of you. That's true. That's because that's the point of the whole game is that moment. For the yeah. most part. I've never beat that game. But no, I, I can't think of like that. many memorable yeah. jump scare parts in other games that I've played. The window in Resident Evil 1. With yes. The dogs. With the liquors. Uh, I was thinking uh, RE1 oh, with the dogs. I was thinking 2 with the liquors. Yeah, 2 with the liquors, yeah. Did they keep that in the remake? Um, I thought so. I'm trying to remember that scene. It wasn't as impactful because there's a whole lot of scenes that I remember more than that. All right. Ah, uh, but yeah, damn it. There's something I was going to. Tom, you inspired me. I can't remember now. But anyway. Oh, so we don't talk Dark Souls anymore. Thankfully, we moved on. We're past. Oh, that. by oh, the way. But, Dark for Souls? The love, but for the love of God. We have two games that have taken its place. Half-Life Alex and Tarkov. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Half-Life Alex. Yeah, we talk about those every week. Though those two get hit, I think, every week now. Which, okay, I gotta say, it's gotta be a testament to the game design because this is my third time playing through it since I got it three months ago. And I'm still loving everything about the game. There's I'll there's something it. there. For sure. I'll get it at some point, but if I ever get VR, yeah. I will definitely I mean I have half a line just to buy it for you now. Nah, nah, don't do it now because I'm not I'm, gonna get to it anytime soon. I'm I'm, <laughs> tempt, I'm tempted. Uh. But anyway, um, I did play a, a new VR game. So it was on the summer sale. I decided to drop the money. It's been on my wish list for a while. Um, I played Zero Caliber VR. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me. What? That was awful. So what? Zero Caliber what VR. Is that? Yeah, it's a... Uh, if it sounds like a generic multiplayer VR shooter that somebody kind of just put out, and doesn't really compare to anything, any of the bigger hitters. You're exactly right. It's it's a VR multiplayer shooter. But the thing is, it's PvE. So it's you and a squad of randos, you know, running out and killing a bunch of terrorists and stuff like that. There's even story missions, or there's a whole through line. Um, it plays like VR shooters did two years ago, which is not a compliment. Um, like a, a lot of the nice quality of life stuff that you see in stuff like Pavlov or especially the the perfected tuning of Half-Life Alex, you're not going to get that in this game. It is rough around the edges. It's fine. It does what it's supposed to, uh, but it's not really something I'm itching to get back to. As a matter of fact, I kind of feel like I wasted my money here. I was uh, asked, why did you get it? Well, it was on my wish list for a while. And with VR games, the the quality bar for a VR title for me to buy it is way, way lower because I just want to support that medium, right? Because that's where I played the majority of my games. I, I looked at uh, my hour count for Steam VR and I think I'm at like 1,700, 1,800 hours. Um, so that's where I've been playing the majority of my games and I will buy just about anything if it's in VR and it doesn't look like total copy paste. This one isn't total copy paste, but it's not. it's not good. I, I can't really call it good. Um, one of the things that soured me pretty early on is uh, the tutorial. They take you through a single player campaign, which is really cool. It's a multiplayer game with a single player campaign. Kind of rare today, especially rare in VR. Mm -hmm. um, but everything that happens in that game is so incredibly cringeworthy. It's hilarious. And I realize I'm saying this on the 4th of July, but they, they've got like this, Faux, I totally saved that. Um, 
They've got like this faux masculinity, toxic armed forces bullshit, like permeating every little piece of this game. Like you're, some of your squad mates get taken out because they literally just stand in front of like the terrorist or whoever that's shooting them until they die. Uh, the AI is a complete fucking joke, um, which is hilarious because there was uh, there was a review saying, "Oh my god, if you like good AI in games, you should get this." Oh, nah. really? <laughs> nah. so much, like, huh? If you've ever played a uh, a first person shooter on the PS2, like in the early PS2 lifetime, that's the AI you're gonna get. Okay. Um, like, do you do you guys ever play the first time splitters? No. No, the okay. second one's where I got in on that. I never yeah, played either, honestly. Great. Um, but it, the AI feels a whole lot like the tr- the first time splitters, which is not a compliment. Um, but yeah, it's it's bad. So your your squad mates died in like this one sequence because they just ran out in front of all the bullets because that's their job apparently. And it, like your guy comes up to you and or your commander is like, hey. Grab those dog tags. I'm sure the family will appreciate it. With that level of like inflection <laughs> in voice acting quality that I just put forward on this goddamn show, I'm like, oh my god, seriously, fucking seriously. It's like, come on, we gotta liberate this village. We gotta win back their freedom. <laughs> I can't even do the voice. But did you? Did the you first stage, the yeah. Until I went back to Pavlov. That bad, huh? Uh, it was um, not great. I'm still, oh my god, I cannot do that voice anymore. It was, it was not fantastic. Let me tell you. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I played that. Definitely regret my time with it, and uh, I will probably not be going back. That's fair. Doesn't sound like so, it. Yeah. Can't blame you. Yeah, it's not not great. Can you refund it? Um, I can. I, it's one of those things where if I get supremely bored with VR, I might go back. Um, like wow, it, how bored be, are you going to be if you go back to that? Yeah. Well, okay. Like, so I just play if, something that if isn't VR. Someone else in VR grabbed that game and wanted to go through it. I would play it with them. That's the only reason I'm keeping it. On the off chance that somebody well, based on that, based on your fun. glowing review, I don't think any of us are going to be picking that up. Probably yeah. not. But I'm I'm literally thinking of like the one or two people who have the same kind of idea about VR games that I do where, Oh, it's on it's VR. I should probably just buy this. And I'm really thinking of magic Dave. Oh yeah. <laughs> so if Dave gets it, then yeah, I've got somebody. To then play again, it. you guys could like run through it and laugh at it and stuff too. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I think co-op, it's going to be a whole lot of fun because it, it is just, I have had lasagnas less cheesy than this. <laughs> Um, That's right. I'm wait. I'm waiting for the drunk cat or drunk um stream. Yeah, uh, like I think it a, apart. Yeah, a drunk stream of zero caliber VR uh, actually sounds like a pretty good time. That reminds yeah. me, and we talked about this before, but I I kind of want to get Resident Evil Six and do that with it too. I am totally fine with this. I don't know if I have any bad games that I want to do that with. I was I actually thinking any... of playing Superman 64 on stream. Yes, you should do that. Okay. Yeah, for sure. However, oh, I didn't tell you guys about this. So um, part of coming home is uh, Gina and I brought back some stuff that we had actually from when we lived in Ohio that our parents still had. Well, I have a uh, pretty good condition NES box with mint condition manuals all through it. With Ooh. the console still fucking white, not sun bleated to that yellow. Ooh. But yeah, a few or a good bit of games, and yeah, I was, I'm pretty excited. I got to figure cool. out how to um, get a digitizer for an NES. Mm-hmm. Because that'll be fun. Because <clears throat> yeah, NES baby, got one. So yeah, kind of excited about that. Do you, uh, do you have Battle Toads? I actually think I do. Nice. I have my favorite NES game, uh, Jackal. Well, one of my favorites. I have Jackal. So I'm pretty excited about doing that. I know a lot of people don't actually know Jackal. So yeah, I don't yeah. know Jackal. I'm trying to think of Jackal. It's oh. the Jeep game. You're the Jeep rescuing the POWs. Oh shit! Yes. Okay. And now. one of them is like a um, 
it's like something similar to like a Mount Rushmore. But instead of presidents, they all look like Mona Lisa heads and they open up and shoot missiles at you yeah. out of their mouths. That nice. sounds fucking great. Yeah, it kind of does. That's one of the bosses that I remember the most. Yeah, it's fucking weird, but really, really fun game. I used to play it with my grandpa with the uh, NES joystick for no apparent reason. <laughs> nice. Uh, but any other games, Tom? Um, a little Beat Saber still. Um, I talked at length last week about that. It is still kicking my ass. It is still a fantastic workout game, and it is getting results. Um, nice. Yeah, that's about it. Well, in that case, um, unless I missed something, you boys have um, any other games? Or should we get to some news? Let's get to some news. Yeah. All right. Um, the first one on here I added because it kind of emphasizes the point of how I always remembered early access being discussed at first. And that is when a game's early access, they'll give it to you cheaper because you're supporting the development. And then once the game's done, it'll come at you at a higher price. Mm -hmm. and I mean, through and through, that's never happened. It's actually, if anything, gone the other way. But Risk of Rain 2 has confirmed that their release price, once they go 1.0, will be higher than the early access price. So if you don't have it, get it. It's a good game. Yeah. Even when we played I, it, like there were some bugs and stuff, but not that many. Not really. It was um, less buggy than most AAA games I've played. A few weeks before I left for Ohio, um, I had a night where it was a guy from the Discord. I can't remember his name. Sorry. And I believe uh, Acro. And we were running through Risk of Rain. That yeah, was a damn good time. I mean, it's still a really good game. So if you don't have it, get it. It's going to be more expensive and you're going to regret it. Um, next thing up, we have uh, Harry Potter has confirmed an open world game for the PS5 and Xbox Series X. Huh. Yeah. That could be fun. Could be. That oh, universe, I think, could do some really fun things. I kind of want to watch those movies again. I remember liking them. But I don't remember that much about them at this point. I'm not allowed to say that. Otherwise, I'm going to probably get strapped down to a chair and forced to watch them. because Oh, Gina's it. all about it, huh? Yep. <laughs> yep. Dobby with the Lego Harry Potter was the bomb. Lego just about anything was the bomb. I remember my uh, fourth year of college, third year of college, playing through uh, the Star Wars trilogy mm -hmm. with uh, my roommate at the time. Love those games. We did Criminally like Indiana underrated. Jones. Those were great. Uh, the Marvel ones. Um, the Marvel superhero yeah. Legos ones. Those were awesome. I watched uh, my old roommate's son actually played some of that with him. Really fun. Lego Batman was really cool. <sighs> I bounce off Batman games. Like I did Arkham Asylum. Man, that oh, was not Arkham that fun to me. Great. I no, Arkham City. Arkham, Arkham City. Arkham I did City. Okay. Yeah, City, I can understand bouncing, but Arkham Asylum was solid. I was like, eh, whatever. I played a little but, bit of Arkham Asylum, but I never got super into it. It was good. I just didn't, I don't know, it didn't grab me at the time. Yeah, I get that. Um, this next one, I'm pretty sure Tom put on there. Um, Cyberpunk 2077 um, had a roll running mechanic that they scrapped because they didn't fit the designs or they're having yeah. design issues. Um, this isn't super rare. Um, what is rare is for people to hear about it because usually, you know, game companies put out a trailer and, oh, look, this thing didn't actually make it in. And then it's like analyzed like from YouTubers for 20 years after the fact. Um, like, oh, hey, we saw this in the trailer and it never showed up. Um, Cyberpunk's just saying, or CD Projekt Red is just saying, hey, uh, you probably saw this in the trailer. It's not showing up. We we had a hell of a time. Uh, sorry. Cool. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, man. Like, don't don't shoehorn shit into your game yeah. if you can't make it fit into the design. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's really there as an FYI. It's really cool that they're being this upfront and transparent about it because usually you like shit would just disappear. Like where that dinosaur uh, go from no man's sky. They're I not going to say anything. Honestly, I wonder if it exists. Um, it, uh, so yeah, that's, that's the thing. If, if you do decide to not be super transparent, what can happen is you get no man's sky, 
where they find that the model was actually on the disc and it was included in there just completely separately. It was not part of their um, their randomization systems or okay. systems at all. It was literally fabricated for the trailer. Okay. I didn't know if they actually had the pieces in there that could get created. Like I knew that it was hard coded for the demos. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know if it was actually configurable. Eric, I know you've been kind of away. Um, did you get a chance to see any of the, the cyberpunk game footage? Um, I watched a little bit of it. It's, um, it's gonna be good. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Graphically, obviously, it looks great. the The style is amazing. Uh, I am the, very excited about it. Some of the gameplay stuff looked kind of cool. I didn't get it. I didn't get a good. You know, I didn't watch through the whole thing. What is it like? Four hours of, of footage. Ooh, the one I saw was like fifteen minutes. Yeah, I saw. Oh, one oh no, I, I'm I'm thinking of some. They had four hours of reviewing. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I was thinking of. But yeah, I um, I kind of skimmed through it. It looked cool. I was just curious if you saw it and what you thought. I I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, from some of the stuff I was thinking, it it looks like a beefed up futuristic GTA. Yeah. Yeah. With the writing oh. of The Witcher Three, which would be yeah, insane. yeah, like which beefed is, up yeah. in every way. Like I feel That's dirty the... even comparing it to. GTA, but because it's gonna have RPG systems that like San Andreas toyed with. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's the part that makes me excited about it because I the RPG like systems. I like the GTA games, but you know I got five and I never did really play through all the story because I just I don't know I didn't just didn't care like it was fine but it wasn't that great for me that 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 type of gameplay I guess. But yeah, one, when you pair that with can. such a cool visual like and thematic style with good story yes. writing from, from a developer that's you know renowned for having incredibly deep and excellent games, like that part makes me want to play it. Yeah, it's it's definitely on my list of we'll get sh- soon after release, if not immediate. Yeah. The only thing that would keep me from getting immediately is if I have other stuff in the hopper. Yeah. <laughs> If I'm in the middle of something else amazing. Yeah, because there is one benefit to this type of game. Um, if you don't get it right away, it's going to be just as good when you get it later. It's yeah, not yeah. a multiplayer game. Yep. Possibly better if there are issues and, and stuff on launch. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I'll be the first to admit, my single player games are the first one to get nixed. Like, if I'm running through some other stuff, I won't buy the first single player stuff until I know I have time because I know I can get it cheaper if I wait. Mm-hmm. So. I always I always try to have at least like one single player and one multiplayer game like in regular rotation, right? Because sometimes sometimes you you're into a multiplayer game and you want to play with friends and you want to play, you know, that kind of style or whatever. But there are days where I just don't like I kind of want to play something, but I don't really feel like being super social or like trying it's to compete. Just like people fuck up. Yeah, or I or I don't want to like have to try hard enough to compete with other players in like a competitive game. So uh, a yeah. single player game is really nice for that. And that's definitely where that'll fit for me is mm-hmm. that single player. I mean, obviously for everyone, but I mean, just only when I'm not playing with other people. Because a game like that, if I dedicate time to it, I'm gone. <laughs> like that game's just <laughs> so fucking big. I'm gone. You're going to find like one aspect about that game that you like, and you're going to like min max that one aspect of that game crazily for hours. Yeah. Well, like I've never beaten an Elder Scrolls game ever. <laughs> I've played a lot of them. I've played a lot of time in them. I've never beat one because I just get lost in the weeds doing other shit. Like I I'm the guy that would, I would make intelligent potions that make me smarter. So I make better intelligent potions. So I get even smarter until I like, blow up the system and then make mm-hmm. some potion of like jump. And then I jump so high, I break the game. I did that with Skyrim with a combination of um, making potions that make my potions better and doing that a few times and then making a potion that makes my smithing better and then making armor that makes my smithing better or makes my potions better. And then just like cascading that until I could build this crazy weapon and armor set where I could just one hit anything regardless. Yeah. Like one hitting the final boss level of broken. 
I love systems that let you do that. <laughs> like if you really want to min max and just break our systems, yeah. go for it. That being said, it takes, you know, a lot of time. And if you're playing the game the way it's meant to be played, you're probably gonna enjoy it more than just like running through one hitting everything because you spent so much time grinding out, you know, potions and and abilities yeah. and stuff. But it's fun to see if you can get to that point. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's getting to that point that's the enjoyable part. That that kind of stuff is fun to do after you've kind of completed the game. Or at least yeah. what you wanted to get out of the initial part of the game. Yeah. I think that's one of the only games where I actually did more side quests than the main quest. Because I would always do like the Thieves Guild and shit like that. Yeah. I You know, I'm probably going to get crucified for saying this, but... I don't think you really need to beat any of the Elder Scrolls games to really experience what they're all about. I That's, agree. True. Like the, the, the standard sto- plot line. The stories are fun. like fine. They just exist to give you something to do in the world. Exactly. It's about the yeah. world. Yeah. And if, if you're going to have more fun, um, like, you know, RPing and joining the thieves guild or becoming a vampire, or, you know, trying to, do all the fucking werewolf werewolf quests or whatever like fucking do it skyrim is not about it's not about parthenax right it's not about the final battle it's not about any of that it's about how many goddamn cheese wheels can you fit in your fucking house before the game crashes right that's that's what the elder Scrolls <laughs> games are all about i've never beat one i never even played skyrim to be honest with you that's that's the only one i played i think i, I played, played uh, uh, Urk. Urk. World in Oblivion. I played Todd a small Howard amount of showed up. It's, Todd Howard has me at gunpoint. He wants to know your location. Eric, what do I so, tell him? So Dobby calls out, and th- this podcast stance on Bethesda is impossible. Well, no, I mean, we got, we've got we've got three we've got three different people with different perspectives. This is literally the only time we've ever agreed on something on a Bethesda game where we all said, "Is this main story the reason to play the game?" And we all said, "No, it's about cheese wheels." Like it's literally the only time we've ever agreed on Skyrim or Bethesda or any of their titles. I'm routinely the only person in this group that says, fuck stories, give me fun gameplay. And this is the only example where the rest of you guys are like, yeah, this game's fun to play. Fuck the story. You don't, you don't no, play no, other I mean, for the stories. Yeah, there are games that they're, are... They're writing is not good. I, I, I love a fantastic story that you know is meaningful and interesting and whatever but i mean there are plenty of games that i love that don't have a any story at all yeah like so rocket I, I league. yeah like i don't get what I you agree mean with Acro. i play rocket league for the story oh, oh about those egg, pe- egg people in the stands dude everyone yep. is eggs everyone is eggs everyone you've this ever is known nature. is eggs Ah, but anyway, um, more news that I like. Actually, I don't know if I'll do anything with this or not. But uh, Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition for PC. Uh, for any of you that did not play it because you don't have a PS4 and you're interested, it is a good game, and it will be on PC. Isn't it? And there's a trailer 50, now for it. Fifty dollars for the complete edition on Steam. I think it's fair, decent price because it comes with the uh, Frozen Wilds DLC, which I haven't played. I mean, that's what I mean. That's a that's a triple A game. You would expect the normal sixty dollar price point. It is two years old at this point, though. Yeah, I guess so. That that is the thing. It came out. I guess I keep forgetting about that because I don't. I didn't play it, so I don't have that like timeline built in my head. And I'm still going for my hundred percent with that Ultra Plus thing. So yeah, yeah, this is this is neat. So their their YouTube video showed off some stuff. Um, I honestly, so the YouTube video was titled like "All New Features for the PC Release of Horizon Zero Dawn." I'm like, oh, cool. What what are they adding? Um, it's literally everything you need just to make a PC port usable to get it, you know, not review bombed, like things like resolution sliders and customizable controls and like i mean it's all good stuff you'd hate if it wasn't there but it's not it's not anything mind-blowing it looks like they're approaching this uh you know trying to make a a really good pc port which is nice yeah um i wouldn't go in expecting anything more than 
Horizon Zero Dawn, but as a PC game, which is great. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But like the, the title of their video kind of disappointed me a little bit. Cause I'm like, all right, you've got FPS sliders. That's well, okay. Cool. Now I will be fair to them. That is something that does come to consoles now because they are on PlayStation and they were made during the era of PlayStation Pro. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, that is a standard thing even for consoles now, which is absurd. <laughs> well, okay. So so the way that that shows up, at least in, in the games that I've played, is that there is there is a... It's, Options. You can't even call it a slider. It's literally a toggle that says... Do you want better frame rate or prettier graphics? And that is the toggle. Those are the options you get. You don't get the, well, make it 4K, but run it at 30 FPS because I've got a shitty TV. You don't get any of that stuff. It's literally, do you want fast or pretty? Okay, cool. We know what that means. <laughs> I don't know if they're like trying to avoid scaring off console people or, or what, but. But you know, I mean, it's, it's effectively the sliders. It's just. It's completely. This is how we're going to implement it. Yeah completely obfuscated from the end user which i mean is, i would love if actual sliders the first person that ruins their playstation because they go 4k 60 frames right <laughs> and it just explodes it just literally I mean, takes off into the sky <laughs> like a jet uh let's see what else we got um i didn't even read this one Con uh, tom what is that congregate congregate no longer congregate? accepting new games congregate is like a classic flash game site I've never They're heard of them. Classic. How how have you never? They you have are like the most obscure as, news stories, Tom. They are like as big as cool math games. Yeah, I said it. Um, Tom, are you stretching to find news articles this week? No, it's it's literally <laughs> they they have been as big, if not bigger, than Newgrounds. Well, I I should say as big. Um, but they are no longer accepting uh, new titles, and they're doing some things to kind of wind some of the more social features around their service down. Um, yeah, flash games are over, uh, and you know, sites like Newgrounds and Congregate are kind of, you know, figuring out what that means for them in a post flash game world. You, uh, you like, get to name the biggest one I went to addicting games. I, well, okay. Addicting games literally just stole everybody else's content and put it on their own site. And that's why everyone went there. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know what they did. You're, you're, you're going great. to, you're going to fucking, you're complaining that I didn't mention Green Man Gaming when I mentioned Steam and Epic. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. Yeah, fuck you, you got me. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> next news. Tom <laughs> is the victor. Uh, All right. Crash Bandicoot 4 will not have microtransactions, which is yeah. great. How the fuck do you put that in Crash? <laughs> Apparently, this was lost in translation because last week people were freaking out. It's like, oh my God, Crash 4 microtransactions are going to ruin it. How do you even add fucking micros in Crash fucking Bandicoot? Fuck these guys. Toys for Bob comes out and it says, guys, what the fuck are you talking about? There's no microtransactions in this game. As a matter of fact, when you buy any edition, you'll get these skins. Like, you can use them or not. We don't really care. Just buy the game. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah. No, no micros. So. I was going to say, I'm like, that doesn't fit the style of game. But um, anyway, last yeah. thing. EVE Online canceled following sexual abuse allegations. EVO Online. Sorry. Not yeah. EVO. Yeah. EVO. No, Big not, difference. Not EVE Online. EVO, the fighting game tournament. Yes. Um, well, tournament. Extravaganza. It's, it's quite literally... Packs a lot of tournaments but for, well, for fighting games. Well, and they have a lot of tournaments and stuff too. Yeah. Like so, if your game makes Evo tournaments, that means that your game is one of the top esport fighting games. Yeah. So uh Tekken pulled out. Um all Bandai pulled out. Uh Mortal Kombat is gone. Uh like a bunch of people pulled out because as it turns out, um like there's there's a whole lot of issues with Evo in general when it comes to this stuff. But amazingly enough, a community you probably don't or do expect if you know anything about the fighting game community. I kind of wish Magic Dave were in the audience. Um, but it turns out that uh, Smash Brothers like has an underground pedophilia ring with a whole Ooh. lot of big names, like a whole lot, like not one or two, but because it's coming out of the woodwork now, kind of like kind of like the Me Too situation in Hollywood. Was that last year? Time is weird to me. Um, 
But like, it, it turns out that, yeah, there's a lot of that shit just fucking permeating every facet of the Super Smash Brothers professional community. And it is, it is not good. It is not good at all. Like, it is just the worst fucking shit imaginable. So everyone's pulling out of Evo. Um, Evo themselves said, hey, we're, we're not going to bother with this. We're just going to shut down. Like, it's over this year. Uh, thanks, everybody. Why, why <laughs> wouldn't they just pull the plug on Smash? Smash because, because while this is going on, there's a lot of these stories still coming out of the woodwork with every single game. So instead of taking the chance of saying, hey, let's, you know, this... This person who's not yet a convicted pedophile, let's have them let's have them do stuff on stage. Oh shit, we just put a pedophile on stage. Like within hours, right? That's how fast this news is breaking. And they can't exactly take the chance of you know putting the limelight on the wrong people and then having news come out later. So they're giving time for all this shit to just kind of shake out and for people to, you know, get get their organization's fucking head on straight before they decide to do anything in an official capacity. So also, I will say when you said when sexual assault or abuse stuff, that is not what I was expecting coming out. Yeah, of that. exactly. Like you, you in, instantly think of, okay, maybe fucking, you know, idiots are, Rap, are being trashed. To women or something. Yeah. 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 Like maybe there's like rampant misogyny and like sexual abuse. And I mean, not that that stuff's good, but you don't instantly go to, oh, hey, there's kids involved. So yeah, this is, this is not like, minor shit this is a lot of really fucked up grooming and stuff i mean like, it is i didn't minor. read every single story but i read a few of them and it's it's fucked so it that's all completely awful. Yeah. fucked that needs to go away and hopefully that also kills away smash because smash's scene is fucking weird as well like yeah. that is the weirdest esports scene to where they're still clamoring to the old fucking titles and don't advance so well, okay, to three. be fair, they're not the first to do this. Do you remember when Counter-Strike Source came out during the Half-Life 2 era? Pros instantly, and you know, through, through uh, Counter-Strike Source's entire lifetime, stuck with 1.6. They completely ignored that game until CSGO came out. Now, however, what you're talking about would be okay if it wasn't, you know, you think they skip Source, then they skip Go, and then they... Skip the next one. That's the what the Smash Brothers guys are doing. I think the timelines are relatively the same, though, because Smash Brothers come out way more often than Counter Strikes do. Right? I mean, do they? It's Valve. So, yes. How many Counter Because you have 1 6, Source, Go. Am I missing one? No, that's, that's basically it. Like, there is Condition Zero, but that never actually got taken seriously. Like, even when it first came out, everybody just kind of ignored it. It was like I mean, a you're critical failure. Because you're talking four Smash Brothers over probably about the same period of time. So, I mean, 98? The same... Yeah, okay. Maybe maybe I'm off. I would need to look at the dates. So, I mean, but either way. I mean, that that's really not an important thing. But also, I need to call out real quick. Sorry, Dobby. This is not fair. Anyway. Um, <laughs> it's really not. Is any... It's kind of been a... Fever dream for me right now. Does anyone um, have anything else you need to throw out there? No, that's that's about it. Um, you know, of, of course, our, our hearts go out to the victims. Um, good on Evo for, you know, basically just putting a blanket shutdown on everything while they figure out what's going out or figuring out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if you want to talk about the way to properly respond to allegations like this, this seems like a pretty good response to me. Like I've I've really got nothing bad to say about Evo in general. They're taking this shit seriously. They're getting authorities involved where they where they can and have to. Um, and they're they're not letting this sort of thing. They're not letting the business uh, ruin their morals. It's it's really what I'm getting at. Which is good. Yeah, it would be real easy for them to just take advertising money and say, oh hey, uh, you know, I guess we'll figure that out eventually. Sorry if we put a pedophile on stage. That's not what they're doing. <sighs> well, with yeah. That, um, Good old happy news to end it. Maybe I should have yeah, helped the, the Yeah. Story. On a little more yeah, positive man. note, uh <laughs> Yeah. Um, didn't uh Team Liquid announce their they have a Rocket League team now. They're getting into the Rocket League esports thing. Yes. Yeah, and that's kind of neat. You, 
if you haven't, everyone go watch that tweet. And if you think, damn it, it's too long, just watch the last 40 seconds of that tweet. Because that is some of the funniest shit between <laughs> esports orgs I've ever seen. And the other org I'm talking about took it in stride, and it was great. Yeah, I, I love the the wholesome trash talk that happens between orgs. <laughs> when it's wholesome. Yeah, when it's wholesome. Yeah. And then so, um, also, I think it's worth calling out uh, Salt Mine 2. Finals are tomorrow. Yes. Um, Lion was playing today against Mile, and um, he fought hard, but Mile got it. So it'll be uh, Mile versus First Killer in the uh, finals of the Salt Mine 2 tomorrow yeah so uh go check that out and if you're interested in what they do um they have a pre-tournament game that's uh like a they're calling it what a battle royale it's like a 1v1 v1 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 20 times so go check it out could be fun either way super proud of your line came in in the top four that's a hell of a fucking showing there are some fucking killers out there. Not just first killer, but there are some killers out there yeah. going against. Mile played really well. Yeah. Yes, he did. And with that, um, I think it's uh rundown time. So for those of you over there on our uh YouTube, we uh do this thing live every Saturday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. If you're over here live, let it be known that we actually put these all on YouTube within a couple of days so you can always watch old ones and we also clip out some good shit so you can just get to the good stuff and ignore our 90 percent bullshit that we talk about <laughs> that's over on our youtube and you can find us at uh just 72 pin connector over there uh, we do have us a twitter that will do plays of the day which is at 72 pc underscore official so every weekday we put out some stuff we'll tweet out some stuff about the team so just follow us there keep up with what we're doing and then finally if i just said too much shit to remember just go to 72 picknector.com and that will take you everywhere. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all we got for us. I think that's Anyone it. have anything else? Nothing here. No. See you next huh? week. Game on. See everyone. <laughs>